Some fresh data on the consumer and whether the January spending slump continued into February. Senior economics reporter Steve Leisman joins us with the CNBC NRF Retail Monitor. Good morning, Steve. We're spending yep. bounce back in February from a January dip with uh, uh, the help of the uh, leap day, of course, but still registered good gains even after correcting for the extra day. Here's the data, the CMC NRF Retail Monitor. We get credit card data, spending data, actual spending data from Affinity Solutions. It showed a 1%, sorry, 1.1% gain uh, using uh, uh, data X autos and gas compared with a 0.2% decline in January. Uh, the year over year strong 6.3%. Core retail, which also was restaurants, up 1% compared to a 0.04% decline in January, a very strong year over year. Uh, a lot of that comes from the leap day. Uh, those roughly 1% gains go away, however, down to 0 0.4 and 0 0.3, much more modest, but still on the positive side when you adjust for the leap day. But they still show a rebound from the January decline and maybe not that beginning of that consumer slowdown. Here's some of the sectoral data up two, three for sporting goods and hobbies. That's strong. Restaurants and food also strong. Beverage as well up 1%. Health and personal care really across the board. Non-store retailers, electronics, appliances up 0.8%. So the 0.2% decline in the retail monitor last month was matched by a 0.5 decline in the census retail report. Unlike the census, the retail monitor is not revised because it's derived from complete data, a, a set of actual purchases. Census revises its data as more responses come in uh, in, the, in, the, in the following month. Economists are looking for a 0.8% <clears throat> increase in that census retail data on Thursday. That would be a reversal of the 0.8% decline in January. So take that forecast, <clears throat> and if it's right, the CNBC NRF retail monitor suggests the January decline was not the beginning, Becky, of the long-awaited slowdown in consumer spending. Uh, Steve, we were already talking earlier this morning about some comments from Jamie Dimon, uh, what he anticipates happening with the economy, just saying that uh, everything that's already been built in, this idea of a 70 to 80 percent shot of a soft landing, he puts it at about half of that. Um, he's seen the strength of the consumer, but just points out that it's really hard to read a lot of these uh, traditional data points post-pandemic because there were so many things that got so skewed. I mean, I think I think he's right. I think that it's 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 uh, it's not in the bank just yet. You still have to bring in, uh, inflation down so the Fed can ease back on those restrictive rates. Uh, the CPI data, as you were talking earlier, is really important. Um, I, I guess I'll be wrong again in predicting that this is the month where we finally see some of the housing data, the housing inflation data come down. I thought it was going to be January. Along with right. a lot of other folks, it didn't happen. If you get it in February, you know, we can finally start to say, OK, this one component that has kept everything up and, and really played a big role in inflation being higher than the Fed would want it has started to come down finally. And if it doesn't, what's the narrative then? Well, you know, it's kind of interesting it, it, you ask that because I've been thinking about that. And I've been thinking about how the Fed has been thinking about it. They might eventually look through it. They might eventually say, you know what? It's not showing up in the data. It's a methodological problem and rely on other data. I mean, I, I do think they really want to see those numbers come in and come down on the service side and even the service side X housing as well. So that's another way they're kind of already looking through it. But um, look, they're going to remain higher for longer if that's the case. And then, you know, that great discussion Joe had earlier uh, with the woman from J.P. Morgan you know, they're, they're, they, they are separating this idea that you can have strong growth or you can't have strong growth uh, and, and, and inflation will come down. It has happened. Um, and I think that's part of what Jamie is saying is, you know what, don't rely on that. That's not the normal course of things. But in the sense that we're still in a post-pandemic period, still putting back um, the supply chain, then it is the case. If we can have uh, terrible growth and high inflation... Stagflation. I don't know why you can't. I guess it just right. means that you can have. What would that be? The inverse or the converse or something? But if right. you can have one, you can have I the mean, other. Was, you would think, Steve. Yeah. Well, it, it ends up. It ended up being transitory, Joe. It ended up being a supply shock, and and, right. and and the supply shock eased off. Not in the time period that the body politic was happy with the success of the word uh, transitory. 
right? Well, it took about it, two years. Uh, unless we never get to, unless we never get to two, because of what we did. Unless we really you are know, stuck. Joe, I'll tell you this: uh, if you, if somebody told me you were at nine, and you were going to two nine Three. and not two, yeah. yeah, you'd be happy. But I mean, you know, um, close enough for rock and roll, my friend, right? But no cuts from where we are then. Well. I do think you can ease back a little bit. I think they're. I, th I think that they could ease back, and then wait, and then wait, and then maybe ease back again and see how the economy responds. I think right. that's one possibility. I mean, they're 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 pretty tight by almost every metric here. But right. okay, that's what you decide. Okay, because we can't. We keep asking about that. Are we really restrictive? You're. A, yes, we are. Well, a little bit. I okay. mean, I, I think I think I think there's a half a point easy on the top, Joe. Okay.